this the story uh, it's called The Giving Tree by um, Shel Silverstein. Silverstein, yeah, yeah. So you're familiar with with his work. Yeah, he's an author. And um, this is the cover of the book. You know, a little a little boy. Um, catching a apple from a tree. And it's a story about a boy in a tree. Um, it's, uh, there's not a lot of words to it, as you can see, which is a lot of pictures, and so it's a, real, it's a children's book, but it, it's, I think you'll find it interesting. So I'm just gonna read this, and then we're gonna meditate, and I'm gonna read uh, another version of it. So this is The Giving Tree by Shel Silverstein. Once there was a tree, how can I, how should I do this? Okay, once there was a tree, and she loved a little boy. And every day the boy would come and he would gather her leaves and make them into crowns and play king of the forest. He would climb up her trunk and swing from her branches and eat apples. And they would play hide and, hide and go seek. And when he was, ti was tired, he would sleep under her shade. And the boy loved the tree very much. And the tree was happy. But time went by, and the boy grew old. And the tree was often alone. Then one day the boy came to the tree and the tree said, come boy, come and climb my trunk and swing from my branches and eat apples and play in my shade and be happy. I'm too big to climb and play, said the boy. I want to buy things and have fun. I want some money. Can you give me some money? I'm sorry, said the tree, but I have no money. I have only leaves and apples. Take my apples, boy, and sell them in the city. Then you will have money, and you will be, then you'll be happy. And so the boy climbed up the tree and gathered her apples and carried them away. And the tree was happy. But the boy stayed away for a long time, and the tree was sad. And then one day the boy came back, and the tree shook with joy, and she said, Come, boy, climb my, up my trunk and swing from my branches and be happy. I'm too busy to climb trees, said the boy. I want a house to keep me warm, he said. I want a wife, and I want children. And so I need a house. Can you give me a house? I have no house, said the tree. The forest is my house. But you may cut off my branches and build a house. Then you will be happy. And so the boy cut off her branches and carried them away to build his house. And the tree was happy. But the boy stayed away for a long time, and when he came back, the tree was so very happy, she could hardly speak. Come, boy, she whispered, come and play. I'm too old and sad to play, said the boy. I want a boat that will take me far away from here. Can you give me a boat? Cut down my trunk and make a boat, said the tree. Then you will sail away and be happy. And so the boy cut down her trunk and made a boat and sailed away. And the tree was happy, but not really. And after a long time, the boy came back again. I'm sorry, boy, said the tree, but I have nothing left to give you. 
My apples are gone. My teeth are too weak for apples, said the boy. My branches are gone, said the tree. You cannot swing on them. I'm too old to swing on branches, said the boy. My trunk is gone, said the tree. You cannot climb. I'm too tired to climb, said the boy. I am sorry, sighed the tree. I wish that I could give you something, but I have nothing left. I am just this old stump. I am sorry. I don't need very much now, said the boy. Just a quiet place to sit and rest. I am very tired. Well, said the tree, straightening herself up as much as she could. Well, an old stump is good for sitting and resting. Come, boy, sit down, sit down and rest. And the boy did. And the tree was happy. The end. So, as we um, go into meditation now, um, we will, I will read to you another version of the same story. And this is by Tolfer Pei, an alternative ending to Shel Silverstein's The Giving Tree. So, uh, please make yourself comfortable. Just bring your attention to the breath a little bit. Relax. Just relax the mind and body for a few moments. I'll start at the beginning of this story again, and then it'll take another twist. So once there was a tree, and she loved a little boy. And every day the boy would come, and he would gather her leaves, and make them into crowns and play king of the forest. He would climb up her trunk and swing from her branches. And eat apples. And they would play hide and go seek. And when he was tired, he would sleep in her shade. And the boy loved the tree. He loved the tree very much, and the tree was happy. But time went by, and the boy grew old. And the tree was off and alone. And one day the boy came to the tree and the tree said, come boy, come and climb up my trunk and swing from my branches and eat apples and play in my shade and be happy. I am too big to climb and play, said the boy. I want to buy things and have fun. 
I want some money. Can you give me some money? I'm sorry, said the tree, but I have no money. I have only leaves and apples. Take my apples, boy, and sell them in the city. Then you'll have money and you will be happy. So the boy climbed up the tree and gathered her apples and carried them away. And the tree was happy. But the boy stayed away for a long time. The tree was sad. And then one day, the boy came back and the tree shook with joy. And she said, come boy, climb up my trunk and swing from my branches and be happy. I'm too busy to climb trees, said the boy. I want a house to keep me warm, he said. I want a wife and I want children. And so I need a house. Can you give me a house? And the tree said, okay, hold up. This is already getting out of hand. Look, I was fine giving you the apples and helping you get on your feet. They'll grow back next season anyway, but no, I'm not giving you a house. You know, I've seen boys like you pull this nonsense with other trees in the forest. First it's the apples, then branches, then the trunk. And before you know it, that mighty beautiful tree is just a sad little stump. Well, look here, boy, I love you like family, but I'm not going down, I'm not going down like that. And while we're on the subject, the tree said, grabbing him by the collar of his shirt, I recognize friendships evolve over time and we may not see each other as often because you don't have time for your tree friends, but we used to be real tight. Now it feels like I only see you when you need something. How do you think that makes me feel? The boy took a long breath. He felt a sour rumble in his stomach because he realized he hadn't considered his friend's feelings. I bet it makes you feel bad, said the boy. Yes, boy, bad. I can't even remember the last time you asked me how I was doing. How are you, tree? asked the boy. He, silently wanted to, he sincerely wanted to know. So the tree told the boy all the gossip from the forest and introduced him to the family of red squirrels that had moved into her trunk. While she was glad for the company the squirrels provided, she was concerned about the long-term health effects of hosting a burrow. So the boy called the local arborist who explained that squirrels don't eat wood, they only build nests in pre-existing holes. So the tree was in no danger. The tree was so relieved and, and so was the boy. He loved his friend and was concerned about her long-term health because she had taught him the importance of empathy. And so it continued, the tree and the boy looking out for each other. Both of them, I'm sorry. And so it continued, the tree and the boy looking out for each other like that both of them content to the knowledge that somebody had their back. The boy attended culinary school. The tree took courses online and got her certification in small business management. They did their homework together nearly every day. The boy became a pastry chef. Together they opened a bakery selling the best apple pies anyone had ever tasted. It turned a profit into the first eight months, which is most uncommon. Eventually, the boy had a son of his own and much later, the son of the boy had his own family too. Because of their friendship, the boy was successful and fulfilled, and the tree grew wider and stronger, standing tall and beautiful in the forest for, the, for many, many, many years, plus a few years, even more than that. 
And as each generation played in her strong old branches, the tree often thought back to the fateful day when the boy had asked her for a house. In truth, she would have gladly given him her branches to build one. She would have given him her trunk to build a boat. She loved him that much. But then she would have had nothing left, not for herself, nor anyone else, and there never would have been a home for the red squirrels. They'd have been no hide-and-seek with the boys' grandchildren, no bakery with the best apple pies anyone ever tasted. Setting healthy boundaries is a very important part of giving. It assures you'll always have something left to give. And so the tree was happy. Everybody was. That's the end. I suggest that we sit comfortably. <coughs> slightly ponder the story just for a few moments and we want to make sure that we come into the present moment. And this, of course, is a story we can discuss later. It's about healthy boundaries. But for now, we can tuck away the past and, and feel safe that the, the future will provide everything that we need. Just come into the present moment. Use the breath. Focus on the breath. And be very still. And very thankful for what we have. If your mind wanders, just simply bring it back to the breath. Find that spot in the body where you feel the breath the most. Come back into the presence.
Let's take a <clears throat> little deeper than normal inhalation of the breath. Bring a little energy into the body. You can do this a few times if you like. Let's bring our hands together in front of our hearts if you like to. May each one of us and all beings be well, happy, and peaceful. May no harm come to us. May no difficulties come to us. May we all meet with spiritual and worldly success. May we have the patience, the courage, and the understanding to meet and overcome any problems or difficulties that we might face in life. So we had a little different meditation. We had actually a, got an opportunity to really do a lot of quiet meditation. <clears throat> um, we had about a half hour of silence in there, which was nice. Mm -hmm. and, um, and we had a couple of readings. Um, had anybody heard that story before? The, the giving tree? Yeah, very good. <laughs> and the tree who set healthy boundaries. I thought it was cute. But it's a, um, you know, it's a story. The, the first story is the, uh, was written back in the 60s about a, it's a, a children. He had trouble publishing that because it was kind of dark <laughs> at the end. You know, the tree and the old, the old guy, and he's just, Taking away, taking from the tree, and then they um, finally, you know, he wanted a boat to sail away. Mm -hmm. The tree said, "I'll just cut down my trunk and turn it into a boat," and he did. And kind of morbid, in a way. And then uh, he said, "And the tree was happy, but not really happy, you know, about that." And then he he just said, "You know, all I am is a stump, basically." And the old, the, the bo once, once lively, playful boy was now an old, old man that could do nothing but sit on the stump, which he kind of whittled away from the tree himself, you know, and didn't really give him much attention. But then the other story, which was built on top of that one, um, was about healthy boundaries. When he asked, you know, hey, I, I want a house, you know. <laughs> You know, can I have your branches? And he's, the tree said, wait a minute, wait a minute. You know, I've, I've gone far enough with this. You know, no, you can't have my branches. And of course, when we, when we build healthy boundaries, um, we're actually helping the other person out is just as much as we're happy helping ourselves out. And so they, it, you know, they had built a partnership and the tree lived a long, happy, prosper, prosperous life. And the man's life was much more fulfilling or the boy who grew into the man and they started a business together and sold apple pies which were very very delicious I guess and um, he had a successful life and his generations flourished and the tree flourished and everything everybody was happy because of setting healthy boundaries and you can do that too Mark <laughs> Those cats. <laughs> yeah. Well, we can all do that. We can all do that. Um, boundaries are, of course, the, you know, the, the, there's the person that says yes, you know, all the time for everything. Can you do this? Can you do this? Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 sure, sure. Or, um, you know, if you need some help, ask me. I'm there for you and all that. And, and uh, for the most part, that's okay. But when, then there's some people that will um, take and take and take. You know, they're sometimes energy vampires. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they're just people like your friends that every time they contact you, they need something, they want something. It's kind of like that guy, 
Just think if you're the only guy in the city that owned a pickup truck. Every time somebody was moving, they would be calling the guy with the pickup truck. Mm -hmm. You know, hey buddy, you still have that pickup? You know, and then after a while, you know, you get kind of tired of that. Then. Time and, and they're they're dumping their stories on you and and kind of dragging your day down every time they call. And um, it's so habitual that you give them advice again and again and again, but they don't even understand that it's advice. They don't even hear it because it's a it's just one of those calls, you know, that they're making and that they feel better about dumping all their problems on you. you know? I actually used to get a lot of that and still I t until I started charging people. <laughs> and uh, one thing led to another. Now nobody calls me. <laughs> I have a very peaceful life. But uh, yeah, I was telling the story today. I, you know, I was going for a walk and I didn't know what I would be talking about or what we could do on a Wednesday, tonight, Wednesday night. And I was talking to this friend and, and um, and she, uh, she was talking about um, boundaries, you know, uh, about her friends and um, how people can dump on other people and things like that. And she said, it's like that, it's like that story about the tree and the little boy. And I thought, I don't, I, what, what story is that? I've never heard that before. And she said, oh, I must have told you that before. I said, no. So she sent me this information. I thought I would share it. And I, I figured, how do I tie that in with meditation? And I, I don't know. I, I still don't know. But it, it <laughs> <laughs> but it, uh, uh, sometimes when we, um, you know, meditation is not a time. It, there's kind of it, 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 meditation is not a time to be necessarily contemplating and thinking about something. You know. So like reading a story like this and say, let's sit and contemplate that. It's that's not really. It's not the kind of meditation that I teach or encourage people to do, but you know, my, the meditation that we usually do here is more um, uh, present moment awareness. You know, what arises in the present moment, not in the mind. You know, not not thinking about things, but actually letting go of of a lot of thoughts and and just being very very present. And I think that's where the healing of meditation comes in, not by necessarily analyzing what is going on within our minds. But then there is going to be some of that that comes up. I mean, th th things come up in the mind and we're going to be taking a look at it. Just like if something would come up in the body, you know, we'd, it's just calling, calling our attention. And then there's contemplation, which is another aspect of meditation where we, we take a subject and we, we rest on that subject and try not to let the mind go beyond that and that's that's a practice that the that the Buddha talked about. Um, contemplation, especially when it comes to uh, like a wisdom teaching, you know, something that we're trying to comprehend, like impermanence or something, you know, some kind of a insight, uh, and we can actually sit with that and, and um, kind of ponder it. But the uh, the as the, the um, Cultivation of the mind in that area is not to let it go beyond that topic, which is not necessarily easy. Um, it depends on the subject, but in, in most cases, the when we contemplate, it's kind of like keeping our eye on the bullseye, you know, just focusing on that thing. So our meditation object would be a subject. But again, I think the healing quality comes from the letting go and being resting in that present moment, letting, letting insight come, come for us. And in this, uh, and in this case, to read a story like this, 
is to see what comes up within the mind and body afterwards, but not necessarily look in it. You know, not, not necessarily look for something, just see what comes up. Anything come up for anybody that um, they noticed from any of this that they want to share? I guess that considering the idea of giving, which is a beautiful <coughs> thing, and there are people who can't say no and who do give too much, and of course, you know, what happens in a lot of cases is that leads to, you know, resentment. You, you can feel resentment when you're always giving, mm -hmm. giving, giving, giving. And so it is a complicated thing, you know. It's, it's, it starts off as something very selfless and loving, and it can, you know, it can really transmute into other things. So that's kind of what popped up for me. Yeah, it, it's just, you know, like when that person that has, that has, you know, you've given something to that person and then they ask for something else again, you know? And that might be okay, but then when they ask again, all of a sudden that, gen that feeling of generosity is more of a burden, kind of. And, um, the tree, in this case, the tree said he loved the little boy so much that he would have gladly given, you know, these things. And that's something, that's a key, you know, very much a key part of the story where he didn't, he felt that there's something more he could give, which was to show the boy that, hey, you know, you, you have to do a few things on your own. <laughs> and, you know, you, you keep asking for this and that. Um, and he, the, 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 tree actually grabbed him by the collar and said, hey, you know, we, we were, used to be pretty close and now, you know, you're, you go away and you come back and you ask for things and you gotta tell it like it is.